Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rock Studios. I'm Stan Miller. I'm the PR and Analyst Relations Manager for Rockwall Automation in the EMEA region. And I am joined today by Mark Bate, Senior Product Manager, Twin Builder, EMEA for ANSYS, and my friend Tim McCain, Technology Partner, Program Manager. Gentlemen, welcome to the studio. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So we're here to talk about introduction to physics-based digital twins. Uh, so I'm, this is a topic I know I have a lot to learn about, and I'm sure our viewers do as well. So, Mark, if I could just start with you. Uh, how does a physics-based digital twin differ from more conventional types of digital twins? Yeah, so a digital twin, I mean, it's, uh, firstly, it's a, it's a widely used term. Uh, and I think one of the things we try and establish fairly early on with, with ANSYS is what we mean by uh, digital twin. Um, so for us, it's, it's a virtual representation of a physical asset um, connected with, with real data. Um, so it differs somewhat from the traditional uh, machine learning approach of a digital twin where um, you're using data only. So it, you, know, you can build some great models with a, a data-based uh, only model, but it does have its limitations. So what we try and do is we supplement uh, those, those machine learning models with physics to create a hybrid digital twin, which then that allows you to um, to have further capability and uh, uh, you're able to do things like add virtual sensors, um, you're able to do things like uh, what-if scenarios, so you can, you can use the physics to combine with the data model um, to create uh, an understanding of what remaining useful life would be, uh, predict um, you know, any, any kind of what-if scenarios you can do with that physics twin. So it adds that extra level of uh, capability to the, to the machine learning models. Remarkable. Tim, I mean just to kind of get your perspective from the Rockwell side, um, you know, what, from what Mark just described, how does that relate to the Rockwell offering and, and how does that happen? I, I would describe our partnership with ANSYS as taking us center left, right? Taking us uh, upstream from industrial operations into product and asset design. So ANSYS is really the world leader in terms of modeling and simulation. You know, their core technology, their core solvers are really about finite element analysis. So before physical assets even exist, the idea of being able to incorporate advanced multiple physics into modeling the performance of an asset or a product before it's produced is what they do at their core. And they're taking that technology and they're basically packaging it in a manner that they can then deploy it downstream on a more real-time basis. And as Mark was stating, it's a combination of simulation plus the actual production data, the IoT sensor type data. So they create these hybrid twins where you can incorporate multiple physics and the actual analytics aspect from the data coming from a physical asset. So it's unique in those regards. And to Mark's point earlier, digital twin has different definitions. It's used in a lot of different contexts. What ANSYS brings is a higher degree of fidelity of modeling and simulation than some of the core tools that Rockwell has. Talk a little bit more about that too. That's a great grounding, I think. Well, Mark, coming back to you, what benefits can manufacturers gain by utilizing this type of digital twin? Yeah, so again, touching on the fact of uh, using the multi-physics simulation to do what-if scenarios. Um, if you take a, a typical manufacturing uh, sort of instance where there may be uh, a, a production plant has different kinds of uh, uh, production capability, you know, they're running different things through the, through the process. Um, when you want to change the, the setup of that, that line to produce something, some other uh, uh, material or product, um, typically, it's done with manual commissioning, you know, manual setup, which can take hours, days, you have lots of waste and so on. Uh, it can be really costly, you know, doing this physical prototyping. Um, so what we're able to do with, uh, with our digital twins is we're able to, to model the effect of, of changes on the process and the equipment so that you can basically do this offline and, and get away from sort of that, that really expensive, costly uh, physical prototyping uh, and do everything in simulation and, and get to that sort of uh, that, that new state with, with minimum uh, downtime minimum sort of uh, uh, reject and, and work and, and so on. Gotcha. Well, Tim, question for you on this. What role do physics-based twins play in smart manufacturing settings? So there's a couple of practical examples that I would use as um, 
you know, scenarios that extend what Rockwell does at its core. So, um, you know, if I, if I go technical on you for a moment, and we think about our logics-based control systems, um, you can have offline versions of those controllers emulated in what we call Echo. You can use tools like Emulate 3D to take a uh, scaled three-dimensional mechanical CAD and have a metaverse-type representation of physical assets and combine that with the control system programming. And we typically do those things for virtual commissioning. So before any physical assets are even built, uh, you've, you've got this digital equivalent. Well, now think about incorporating some of the advanced modeling and physics capability into both of those environments. And that's where with the ANSYS Twin Builder that takes very complex solver results, boils it down into a reduced order model and includes things like mechanical physics, fluids, um, electromagnetics, and other forms of physics simulation, you can actually incorporate that and have direct interaction with a simulated controller as well as encapsulate that in an emulate 3D experience. So a practical application is you've got, say, like a pick and place. Okay, emulate 3D has some basic capabilities to understand, are we going to run into mechanical interferences? Do we have the ability to pick up a certain load? What type of force is applied? ANSYS would enhance that even further. Other examples would be if you had a flexible manufacturing scenario where perhaps you were mixing different materials and you needed to move from one tank to another, the idea of incorporating things like the fluid viscosity and the material properties, the uh, friction coefficient in pipes, the simulated uh, reaction of different uh, materials being merged together and the response based on uh, mixing or heating or what have you. Those are the types of advanced fidelity and capabilities that the ANSYS modeling provides us. And we have integration points with the control system, whether it's emulated or real. Uh, we can do that through IoT platforms. Uh, we also have the ability to integrate that into Emulate 3D. So those are some practical examples as well as some of the soft sensors that Mark had, had uh, kind of alluded to earlier, where you may not have the ability to add a sensor uh, or it would be costly to do so. Modeling and simulation and incorporating that into a soft sensor is a real practical application for the use of ANSYS Twin Builder. Got it. I think th those examples are really helpful to kind of like, you know, crystallize some of the concepts that we're talking about. Gentlemen, this has been a great discussion. I know we could go on for quite a while. Uh, thank you for viewing. It's been a fabulous discussion. And if you're in interested in learning more about Rockwell Automation and ANSYS collaboration and the integrations and how we complement one another, make sure that you visit rockwellautomation.com for more information.